So what have we seen so far about who Christ is to us? We've seen him in his intimacy with the Trinity as the summation of God's revelation by the claims of his names, the picture of Scripture as our identity and our destiny. All of that is who he is to us. But now we come to the final of this series, and that is who he is to us in the majesty of his supremacy. Christ is primary. Everything else compared to him is auxiliary and exists to serve the purposes of the one who reigns supreme right now. He is supreme. He is sovereign. He is superior. He is superlative. Therefore, he is sufficient. And therefore, he is totally satisfying. It is the nature of Christ to be supreme, to be both the center and the circumference. This is who he is. If God had anything for us apart from Christ, then Christ would not be ultimate. He'd be penultimate, and thus he wouldn't be supreme. However, as we said in the last session, what he will be Lord of ultimately, he is Lord of right now. All the glory he will display ultimately, it all belongs to him right now. All the promises he one day will fulfill, he already inherits them right now. All the purposes of God he will one day bring to consummation are summed up in him right now. And even now, he has the name that is above every name, both in this age and in the age to come. Even now, he is our Lord and our God. Boy, when Thomas made that discovery in that moment, face to face with Jesus. He experienced intimacy with Christ in his supremacy. When he said, my Lord and my God, he says, I understand now I'm to be kept at the center of who Jesus is, where Jesus is headed, what Jesus is doing, how Jesus is blessed. Let me share with you the verses of a great old hymn, over 200 years old, written by Charles Wesley, that describes everything we've been talking about concerning the greatness and glory of who Christ is to us. Now, maybe you've never sung it. It begins like this, Jesus, the name I over all. I won't sing it for you, but here are the words. Jesus, the name high over all, in hell or earth or sky, angels and mortals prostrate fall and devils fear and fly. Jesus, the name to sinners, dear, the name to sinners given. It scatters all their guilty fear. It turns their hell to heaven. Oh, that the world might taste and see the riches of his grace. The arms of love that encompass me would all the world embrace. Thee I shall constantly proclaim, writes Wesley, though earth and hell oppose Bold to confess thy glorious name before a world of foes. His only righteousness I show. His saving truth proclaim. Tis all my business here below to just cry out, Behold the Lamb. And then he ends by saying, Happy if with my latest breath I might but gasp his name and preach him to all and cry even in my death. Behold, behold the Lamb. This is one of the great African-American preachers of the 20th century, Dr. E.V. Hill, preached all around the world, had a very large church in Los Angeles. And when he would preach on a Sunday morning, he would have a woman sitting on the pew in the front row whose only responsibility was to listen to his sermon. And as he preached, if she sensed that in any way he was beginning to veer away from other things and not keeping Jesus in clear focus, then her responsibility, and this really happened, she was allowed to say out loud where anybody else could hear, but where the, the pastor could hear, she was supposed to say, lift him higher, Brother Hill, lift him higher, and that would help Evie Hill know I need to get back and focus more on Jesus. Notice she didn't say just lift him up. Instead, she would say, lift him higher. We need to do the same. We need to challenge one another to lift him higher. Facing our crisis of Christology, we must do everything we can to lift him higher, to foster Christ awakening movements right where we live. We must lift him higher in order to reclaim among us a consequential Christology. Come on, let's lift him higher. 
What a privilege we have to lift higher and higher a vision of the, of the Son of God before God's people, showing one another the full extent of His spectacular supremacy and doing so in such a way as to fully experience its radical consequences for every facet of our worship and fellowship and discipleship and mission. Because you see, as we've said before, Christians sitting in our pews right now, our brothers and sisters, they don't know how much the Spirit of God has their hearts truly longing for more of God's Son. And they're not going to know that until someone shows them how much of His spectacular supremacy they have not yet seen.